steel, which is the most important engineering and construction material, is widely used in our daily life. For example, household appliances such as refrigerators, washing machine, you bike and cars, the buildings where you live and work, all these are made of steel. This poses a huge demand of the steel in our society. Currently, we produce about 1.8 billion ton steel per year. However, the production of steel leads to a huge environmental burdens. For example, the steel production leads to about 3 billion ton CO2 emissions per year, and this accounts for about 7 to 8% CO2 emissions in our world. To mitigate the CO2 emission, we must solve this problem in the steel industry to find a sustainable solution. Currently, hydrogen-based direct reduction is the most promising method to sustainable iron making. In this method, we use hydrogen as a reducing agent to reduce iron oxide. The byproduct is only water. However, due to the huge amount of iron, we also need a large amount of hydrogen. To storage and transport hydrogen is very challenging because it requires very low temperature or very high pressure. To overcome the problem associated with the hydrogen storage and the transport, I am looking for another sustainable iron making methods to reduce iron oxide. I'm going to study the underlying chemical reactions in this new method and also the characteristics of the products. To overcome the difficulties of the hydrogen storage and the transport, we could consider alternative fossil-free hydrogen carriers. For example, ammonia is considered as the most promising uh, hydrogen carriers in the future hydrogen economy. Ammonia has a very high volumetric hydrogen content and energy density. And the big advantage of ammonia over hydrogen is it can be easily liquefied at mild conditions by pressurization at 8 bar instead of 350 to 700 bar required for hydrogen. And also it can be liquefied by refrigeration processes at minus 33 degrees C instead of minus 253 degrees C for hydrogen. Ammonia normally has to be split into the hydrogen and the nitrogen again at the application site. This requires additional processes. And this cracking processes is also energetically costly. In our study, we are trying to use ammonia directly in our redu reduction processes to make uh, to produce iron. So in our lab, we introduce the S delivered ammonia directly in our furnace to reduce the iron oxide and to produce direct reduced iron, which is also known as sponge iron because of the porous structure of these products. Subsequently, we could also charge the reduced iron in an electric arc furnace to melt it and also adjust the chemical composition to the desired steel grades. We have two key findings in our study. The first one is related to the reduction behavior, and the second one is related to the characteristic of the products. We found that the ammonia-based reduction uh, can be as effective as the hydrogen-based direct reduction, and this is because of the involved autocatalytical reactions. So during the reaction, the gradually reduced iron catalyzes the decomposition of ammonia into hydrogen and nitrogen, and the release the hydrogen can further promote the reduction of iron oxide into iron. Secondly, we also found the nitrides formation during cooling when the reduced iron experienced a low temperature in ammonia. This nitride formation is another key advantage of the ammonia-based direct reduction as the nitriding improves the chlorine resistance of the reduced iron and passivates the highly active sponge iron. 
So this provides uh, a safety critical uh, benefit for the follow-up uh, handling and the logistics. And this protective nitrites can be dissolved and removed in the following uh, melting process in the electric arc furnace. Our findings are relevant to several aspects. First, to direct use ammonia instead of hydrogen eliminates the energetic and the logistic disadvantages of hydrogen storage and transport. Second, the ammonia-based direct reduction offers a process shortcut, alleviating the separate ammonia cracking process into hydrogen and nitrogen. The involved autocatalytical reaction offers further efficient gain and cost reduction in the single furnace. Moreover, the required direct reduction furnace and the electric arc furnace other industry mature technologies. Last but not least, the in-situ nitride formation during the process provides a production of the pure iron from the environmental degradation. Otherwise, dedicated additional processes are required to store and transport sponge iron. So in our study, we show how we can deploy the intermittent renewable energy for disruptive sustainable metallurgy processes. In our study, we have proven the ammonia-based direct reduction is a novel method to reduce iron oxide to, uh, without CO2 emissions. In our future work, we are going to study the effect of different processing parameters such as temperature, gas mixture, and also the flow rate on the ammonia-based direct reduction. All these parameters are highly relevant for scaling up this process to an industrial level. And of course, this requires a co close collaboration with the industry partners.